Hello my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria, the creator of Bahati Life. Let's go ahead and dive into the Aquarius full moon that is happening on July 23rd at 10.37 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, for those of you guys that are subscribed to my YouTube channel, you'll know that at the start of this week, in this week's predictions, I was talking about the fact that we had the word temptation coming through, my loves. We had the word temptation coming through, and I started shuffling the cards. The Seven of Swords came out, the Seven of Cups came out, the King of Wands and the King of Cups, I'm sorry, King of Pentacles, and I don't remember what the second one was, or the fifth one was, but we are gonna carry off with that. Now, what I felt already, if you didn't watch that video, and I'll go ahead and link it around here somewhere or down in the description box, is I was feeling like people, we, you, us, need to be mindful of the choices that we are making at the time of the full moon happening in a sign of Aquarius or being mindful of the choices that we've already made because that are clouding and fogging our mind up right now. One thing that I can feel and that I can sense in the first word that came through was emotionally detached from the outcome. This is pulling yourself out of the intense feelings that you are going to feel at the time of the full moon. First and foremost, full moons tend to bring all of our feelings up to the forefront in a way that can be very emotionally vulnerable, that can be very emotionally seen, triggering, heightened, but even more so with this full moon in the sign of Aquarius. It's so funny that it, this is actually in the sign of Aquarius because the moon is sitting so directly, almost directly conjunct Pluto, the planet of transformation, the planet of depth and shadow and control, manipulation and power, who is also retrograde creating a lot of tumultuous energy for the past few years in the sign of Capricorn. And what ends up happening is that when the moon and Pluto are so closely connected like this, it takes, and, and then at a full moon, it takes a normal feeling, a normal emotion, heightens it to infinity and beyond. It pushes us past our normal emotional um, bounds, okay? Um, and what happens is, is that at the time of the full moon, the moon itself is directly opposing the sun, representing our ego, representing where our energy as a collective is being directed, where the light of, you know, our solar system is being directed. And because the sun is directly opposite of the moon, and the moon is almost conjunct Pluto, Pluto, that also means that Pluto is also directly opposing the sun. What does this mean? This means that not only is the moon being powerfully impacted by the placement of Pluto, but also the sun is. Now, this makes a lot of sense that I felt the word emotionally detached, and this is going to be so tough to do, especially at the time of the at the time of this full moon. Why? Because our emotions are going to be heightened. This is even more reason for you to take a little additional time for yourself in order to process your feelings in order to not make a decision or a choice right away. It's so interesting too. I don't know if you guys remember this. I do because I just <laughs> filmed it. In the video for the week of July 19th, I said the sign of Aquarius rules the star card within the tarot, but for whatever reason, I was feeling the hanged man card. And then I looked down and then the hanged man card was there. What the hangman card represents in the tarot is a state of suspension, a state of surrender. And the reason why I feel that spirit is calling us into that is because there's a lot of things that are going to start popping off at the time of this Aquarius full moon. And instead of us immediately reacting to them, instead of us immediately you know, having a, a reaction based upon our habits, based upon our rituals, based upon how we have done things before. Spirit is guiding you to change your fate, change your future. It's so interesting because Neptune is directly opposing the wheel of fortune, or I'm sorry, the part of fortune. Part of fortune is sitting in the sign of Virgo. 
Virgo rules discernment. Virgo says, listen, I may be feeling this, I may be seeing this, I may be experiencing this, but it's my job, it's my duty, it's my responsibility, it's my vibe to process this before I react. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a Virgo myself, so sometimes if, a pro if, a, if Virgo energy is overly stimulated or overly you know, stretched too thin by all the other things that it is processing, it will snap, it'll get frazzled, it'll get critical, it will you know, react, okay? It'll literally, you don't wanna cross paths with an angry Virgo, I'll say that, okay? One time one of my best friends said to me, crossing paths with Jess when she's angry is like running into a burning building. <laughs> and then it passes, because I have to process it. But this is a perfect example and epitome of what it is that I can see within this chart, which is we don't want to react immediately from what it is that we're seeing, feeling, hearing, you know, at the time of the Aquarius eclipse. Now that's a strong warning. I don't want to call it a warning, but a message that's coming through my loves, but also keep in mind that Saturn retrograde is still moving through the sign of Aquarius right now, totally disrupting our, our status quo, our, our normal. I've been saying this since like three years ago, we're entering into the realms of new normal territory and that's exactly where we're at right now. Aquarius is totally stretching the mind and the imagination as far as what our government, our business and our foundations are gonna look like. Now that Saturn is squaring off with Uranus, the planet of disruption and instability, but also future planning and and um, idealistic thinking in the sign of Taurus. This we're feeling this tension even even you know even more. So it'll be really interesting to see what pops off during during this this moment in history, especially when it comes to how is the government, how are businesses, how are politics, how are they going to try to control and contain the people when they're starting to realize that the people cannot be controlled and contained, okay? That's gonna be really interesting to see what happens there. So, we might be seeing some really interesting um, meltdowns when it comes to communication and information that is coming out. The people are very, very skeptical. They are breaking free from past conditioning and past robotic ways of thinking, very group think. The, the, the people, the public, are, are, they're you know, erupting in, in uh, what is the word? Rebellion. Rebellion, okay? Power to the people. This is something I've been saying and predicting for quite some time. And what can we see here? What do we have? What are the cards coming through? Okay, we have five of cups. This is something that showed up in this week's reading. So again, this is a very emotionally tumultuous, exposing, and really, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of the word depth. There's a depth of emotion here. Sometimes with the five of cups, it can really tie us to feelings of disappointment and internal suffering. However, I don't know if I necessarily feel like that is everyone and every, everything. You know, not everything is ca causing pain and suffering for some people. I feel um, a, a depth of gratitude. I'm seeing a depth, like feelings that feel really good that were, you know, for some people, feelings that feel really good, but they go so deep. I feel as though with the Five of Cups here, I'm getting a sense of um, it feels impermanent. Some of you guys are wondering, okay, this is great for me to feel this and to look at this, but like how long is it going to last? There's that feeling. The High Priestess says, listen, emotionally detached from, from thinking about the future, from thinking about the past, be present here now. Sometimes with our intuition, my love, wow, wow, Seven of Swords showed up again. Seven of Swords and the Judgment card, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. This lighting might be a little off right now. It might be a little off, but that's okay. So the thing that I'm getting right now is whether you're manifesting, whether you're happy with your current circumstances and situations and what's going on here currently, there is something brewing. There is something budding. And here we have the Two of Cups, the very base of this reading. Okay, something, and then we also have the High Priestess. These are two polarizing factors that are wishing and wanting to come together or they're being, I'm hearing the word magnetized, okay? So this is something that you have set intention for. This is something that you have worked to manifest. Some of you guys with the Five of Cups, the feelings of 
you know, it's like you're, I'm sorry, what I'm getting is the feeling of balancing gratitude with this feeling of it hasn't come to fruition yet or the fact that it's already manifested or it's manifesting and you're wondering and you're worried about, okay, how much time do I have before this passes? How much time before I have to say goodbye? Spirit is saying that don't constant, don't, don't hyper focus on that. You're going too far into the future. You're going too far into the past. And what we want you to do is sit here present in the moment and just be, be here with us. When you are going into your ritual, when you're going into consulting your tarot or consulting your higher self or consulting a higher up or consulting your partner, don't ask the question to them, to they, to it, to us, the higher, whatever. Don't ask them, okay, what's your timeline? What are things looking like? The fact is, is that um, the unknown, I'm hearing the sense of the unknown is where it needs to be, where it needs to rest, where it needs to lie. You want to be surprised. I don't see the Wheel of Fortune here yet. However, I am getting a sense of things, really a, a strong sense of trust the fact that things are working. I'm hearing they're playing themselves out. Emphasis on the word play. Play because it's not direct, it's not forward, it's not serious, it's not here, signed, sealed, delivered, here at the dotted line. It's more playful. This means that you're going to see it flitting off this way, you're going to see it flitting off that way, and you're going to be sitting there looking, all right, what's going on? I need to know. Spirit is saying, listen, leave it to us. The, the interesting thing about the judgment card that's coming through is that sometimes, and I'm just being called to, rem to remind this, or to remember this, when it comes to judgment, sometimes it's not what people are judging about us or a decision that's being made by us, but it's about what the divine has already decided. It's what the divine, and this is where the Wheel of Fortune is kind of really truly coming through, and now that I think about it, the judgment card is 20, Wheel of Fortune is half of that, so number 10. So, and also, now that I think about it, judgment is also two. So we have High Priestess here. We have the high priestess is the card of number two. We have the judgment, which is 20. Two plus zero is two, so it breaks down into two. Then we have the five of cups. We have three of cups that are upright, the two that are standing, and at the base of this reading, we have two. So we have two, 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 and then seven of swords. So don't worry about what is playing out for good or for bad in your favor. And as I'm saying that, I'm like, okay, so then what are they? Okay, spirit is like emotionally detached from the outcome. It's not that you aren't going to manifest. Wow, king of cups and king of wands. So these are very different energies here. King of wands rules his fire, his ambition, his excitement, his enthusiasm for being a protector for being someone who pursues feverishly the things that is that he loves at this moment in time. He's an adventurer. He's very hands-on. King of Cups is more of the consult, like a consult, consultant, emotionally consultant. He's emotionally, I know that people say that the King of Cups doesn't really talk about his feelings and his emotions I've never agreed with that. I've always felt that the King of Cups does feel very in depth, you know, his feelings and his emotions, and he does talk about it. But because it's not, because those feelings are so stabilized, it's not that he's keeping those feelings a secret, it's just that it doesn't need to be put on display. And when I see both of these two cards here, showing up masculine energy, I'm seeing that, I'm seeing, interesting, I'm seeing that you don't need to be doing anything at the time of the full moon in Aquarius. Why? Because the king does not, the king energy is masculine, it's what we do. They do not do everything. They are more, more often than not pulled away from most of the trivial things of life because they have interests and 
responsibilities or a persona or something that they have that they've secured for themselves that would be at risk if they were too overly involved they're not worried so much about the fate of the of the future why because they have so much support around them that's making sure that they are stabilized that they are safe that they are secure because they have to protect they have a responsibility to protect and to provide However, at the same time, they're not wasting those resources. They're not wasting their energy. And the same thing is coming through for you guys. Whether this is someone who you are manifesting or whether these are traits that you are manifesting within yourself. Look, Four of Pentacles just showed up next. This is the card of not having to do anything just yet. Just yet. It's all about being stabilized and secure in where you are currently at right now the judgment card is really standing through with that for me spirit let's talk about that shall we death card so yeah whatever this is that is going to be taking off at the time of the full moon and we're getting seven of cups seven of cups just showed up again um, Seven of Cups, Hierophant, and the Eight of Pentacles. Whatever it is that you're seeing playing out, and the Hierophant also showed up. So the, these are very, this is a totally different deck, you guys. This is the first deck that, is that I was working with, the Light Seekers, and this is the deck that I'm working with now, the Tarot of Sac Sexual Magic. And they're, the same cards are, are being pulled up, and I shuffled both of them really, really well. So this these messages are saying, literally, don't we don't want to react at the time of the eclipse. I'm sorry, I, I wanna say eclipse because it feels like very eclipse-like. So we also have 777 here as well. So this is divine perfection, but everything needs to fall into place, into alignment in according to the divine's will. And because the eclipse, I keep wanting to say eclipse, I'm so sorry. Because the full moon is happening, it's going to be really tough to detach to emotionally detach from the outcome and from what is occurring however things are not totally clear things are not completely cemented neptune is sitting directly opposite of the vertex point the vertex point is sitting in the sign of virgo this is faded account faded accounts and faded events that we need to have discernment with that and i just looked at the clock it's 11 11. so we need to have discernment with them the part of fortune shows that having discernment is where you're going to find the biggest blessing but also neptune retrograde and sign of pisces is very very cloudy okay so we want to really take a step back and we want to slowly i just heard the word savor and then i smelt chocolate but it was like a chocolate milkshake so which is so interesting and I'm getting like really thickness. So it's like, I don't know if you guys have ever had a chocolate milkshake. I'm not really a chocolate milkshake girl. I'm more vanilla myself. Of course I am Virgo vibes. But if you ever try to suck the, the milkshake up through a straw, it can be really, really thick. It's not like a very quick, you know. So I just feel like the, the, the fact that that vision is coming through is not about rushing through to get to an outcome, rushing to have a reaction. It's about letting it sit for a minute and almost exploring your options but also not making a decision right away because I really feel like your discernment and your patience is going to pay off in spades now what is it spirit that you guys want them to be manifesting I keep seeing the number two here oh look at that look at that the page of wands and the knight of cups so the two keeps coming through everyone's going to be different but two keeps coming through, two as the high priestess, two with the five of cups, the two cups standing. Two of cups is here. Am I missing another two? Oh, the judgment card, 20. The devil card just jumped out. And I also said temptation. I feel like spirit is calling you to have a heightened state of awareness of what it is that you are partnering with who it is that you're partnering with and why you want it. Ten of Pentacles. Are you thinking about your, I hear like generations, but you know, not repeating the, the, the past mistakes of generations of like why they've chosen things in the past, maybe because of lack mentality, maybe because of lack of resources, maybe because of, um, you know, bad luck or good luck in relate, whatever it is like, but not repeating 
the mistakes of those who have come before you, but having the discernment for what is right and good for you, especially with the justice card here, having the discernment to make the right choices and decisions, not just what shows up first and foremost, okay? So, oh my gosh, and to finalize this entire reading, we have the Seven of Pentacles. So I believe, I don't know if all of the sevens are here, but it's literally divine, I'm getting divine intervention. Seven of Cups, Seven of Swords, Seven of Pentacles. The only thing that we're missing right now is Seven of Wands, and Seven of Wands is like fighting for what you want. And this is the thing that says, don't do that. Okay, literally it's the polar opposite. That's the one card that's missing here, is not having to prove or defend your honor, defend your word, defend your what you want, what you want for yourself. We also have justice card and the judgment card. You have nothing to prove. Everything has been proven and everything has been laid out into order. Watch it, observe it, make a note of it. And then as when the water starts to settle a little bit, the dust starts to settle, then you make your choice. Then you make your decision. Okay, when it comes to manifestation, it's being very discerning about what you are calling in and harmonizing with. So the next card that it is that I'm pulling is the Eight of Cups. And as I see this, what I'm hearing and what I feel is when you say yes to something, you're actually saying no to another. So this is where your discernment comes through and says, if I'm going to say yes to this, am I blocking out a blessing? Am I blocking out what is just on the horizon and what is coming through? Or do I want to give myself the opportunity and the option to explore my options instead of making a decision right here, right now, especially when the message that's coming through is emotionally detached for the full moon in the sign of Aquarius. And don't forget, we have seven 777 that was coming through for this reading we had 222 divine order everything with divine perfection and and nothing is incomplete right it, even in in they say on the seventh day this is the time of rest this is the time of putting it down and looking and seeing what you have done looking at seeing what you've created and seeing that it's good but also understanding like okay what is missing here what you know what how do we want to like work with what we've already created, what we've already built here? And we want to explore that. We want to explore those options. We want to explore those opportunities just like the divine has, okay? And don't forget, okay, we have the Knight of Cups and the Page of Wands. So there is something that wants to come in that is going to spark and spark like spike your your fire your passion and i do think that it's going to be something stable especially with the king of wands energy here and the king of cups because these are things that are not things that we want to pass up okay so please make sure that you're subscribed to this youtube channel because we're playing more videos where this came from and i'll see you in my next one bye